Hi hey guys, we're going to start with section 1.3. Uh, it's entitled Angles in the Coordinate Plane. The chapter is Chapter 1, Trigonometric Functions. We're going to talk about the building block of trigonometry, and that's the uh, that's an angle in standard position. Uh, an angle is in standard position when the initial side is on the positive x-axis. The terminal side is rotated uh, about the origin, uh, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And as you know from geometry, we measure angles in something called the degree, okay? Um, that's what we used in geometry. Um, but in trig, we introduce a new type of measurement called the radian. Uh, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later in the course. Um, and the radian is basically uh, a, a measurement based on the circumference of uh, a circle. Um, if we have an angle in standard position here, this is what it could look like. All right, our initial side is on the positive x-axis, right, and our, the terminal side is rotated about the origin. Okay, this angle has been rotated counterclockwise, and this angle, because it's rotated counterclockwise, it's going to have a positive measurement. However, if we took the terminal, the initial side, and we rotated the terminal side uh, clockwise, that would have had a negative measurement. Okay, so if we talk about the quadrants uh, in terms of algebra, the quadrants don't change uh, labels. This is still quadrant one. This is still quadrant two. This is still quadrant three. And you guessed it, this is still quadrant four. All right. If we make one full rotation counterclockwise, so we start at the initial side, and we rotate all the way around to the initial side again, that's going to be a 360 degree measurement. However, if the terminal side lies on the positive x-axis as well, that angle measure is going to be zero degrees. So let me find a color to put that, that in. All right, so this is, could be zero degrees. Okay. Uh, so if one full rotation counterclockwise is 360 degrees, well then half of a rotation is going to be 180 degrees. All right. One full rotation is 360 degrees, so this could be 360 degrees as well. If we'd make a quarter of a rotation, a quarter of 360 degrees is 90 degrees. And if we make three quarters of a, of a rotation, that's going to be 270 degrees. Now if we make rotations clockwise, a quarter of a rotation clockwise, that's going to be negative 90 degrees. Okay, But this is the basic ideology behind graphing angles in the coordinate plane. So that means any angle measure between 90 degrees and 180 degrees is somewhere in the second quadrant. Right? And these right here, these Conversions are going to come up incredibly often uh, in this section. Uh, whether I tell you to graph an angle that's uh, some fraction of a rotation counterclockwise or counterclockwise, you're going to need to know that um, one full rotation counterclockwise is positive 360 degrees, and one full rotation clockwise is going to be negative 360 degrees. So let's take a look and graph a few of these. So let's find the degree measure of each of the angles uh, in standard for, for each rotation, and we'll graph it in standard position. All these angles are in standard position. So we could label our axes here with an X and a Y. And we can also graph our initial side. It starts at the origin, and our initial side is always on the positive x-axis. Now, our angle theta, all right, this is the Greek letter theta. It's commonly used to represent angles, uh, angles and angle measurements in terms of degrees. So theta equals one quarter of a full rotation clockwise. One full rotation clockwise 
is negative 360 degrees. Okay, one quarter of three hundred negative 360 degrees is negative 90 degrees. So theta equals negative 90 degrees. And if you remember from the quadrants, negative 90 degrees starts at the initial side and only comes a quarter of the way around. And that angle will lie on the negative, the terminal side will lie on the negative y-axis. So that's our angle theta. Okay. Let's do one more, except now let's change it to counterclockwise. Let's do a two-thirds rotation counterclockwise. All right, our initial side is still on the positive x-axis. So we have our positive x-axis, or our x-axis, and our y-axis. And we'll do the same thing we did uh, in the last example, except there's one value that's going to change. Our, our angle theta has a measure of two-thirds that of one full rotation counterclockwise. One full rotation counterclockwise is 360 degrees. So our angle theta is two thirds of 360 degrees, which is positive 240 degrees. Now, remember, this angle here, if it lied on the positive x-axis, our terminal side would be zero degrees this would be 90 degrees because we're going counterclockwise this would be 180 degrees this would be 270 degrees and all the way around would be 360 degrees so our angle is going to fall somewhere here in the third quadrant all right and i'm not going to be you know overly upset if you're not accurate enough but draw it where you think it should be all right, so it comes around to 180, and it comes somewhere around there. That's where that angle theta approximately is. All right, approximate it the best of your ability. Um, I know you guys don't have protractors on you to get this uh, exact, um, but if it's in the quadrant that uh, it should be in and it's relatively indicative, and that's fine. Also, something that you can use to help you um, determine where it should be. 240 degrees is closer to 270 degrees than it is 180 degrees. So that angle should be drawn a little bit closer to the negative y-axis than uh, the, pop, the negative x-axis. Okay. So that's the basics of graphing angles uh, in the coordinate plane. Let's talk about uh, one other aspect of angle measures as well, and that's something called coterminal angles. Um, coterminal angles, let me get to the slide here. Coterminal angles, they're angles that are also in standard position whose terminal sides coincide. All right. So typically, you add or subtract 360 degrees, you'll find, or increments of 360 degrees, you'll find an angle that is coterminal to an angle in standard position. So using the angle that's graphed below, all right, I'll show you the angle in a moment, we're gonna find the measure of, an, uh, of a coterminal angle under one counterclockwise rotation, and then we'll find the measure of a coterminal angle under one clockwise rotation, so we'll go plus 360 degrees and minus 360 de degrees, and then we'll find uh, a counterclockwise rotation other than that in part three here. All right, so our angle here, our angle theta, is 135 degrees. All right, so theta is 135 degrees. All right, we're doing one counterclockwise rotation first. So all we have to do is take this angle here and add. 360 degrees to it and we'll get another angle in standard position that is coterminal in which the terminal sides will coincide they'll be the same exact point here so uh, an angle that's coterminal would be 135 
degrees. Since we're going clockwise, counterclockwise, we have to add 360 degrees. And 135 plus 360 degrees is going to be 495 degrees. Okay. Now, if we go under a clock, clockwise rotation, all right, let me erase this. If we're going under a clockwise rotation, put that right back there. If we're going under a clockwise rotation, I'll use a different color here. We're taking from the terminal position, terminal side, and we're subtracting 360 degrees. So we're taking 135, our angle theta, 135 degrees, subtract 360 degrees, and we'll get an angle that has a measure of negative 225 degrees. And I'll do the last one in purple. Okay. And then we're doing a counterclockwise rotation other than that in part three. All right, so in part three, we went, we went with 360 degrees plus 135 degrees. We took that terminal side and we added 360 degrees to it to get 495 degrees. And what we'll do for the next one is we'll take that 495 degrees and we'll add another instance of 360 degrees to it. And we'll get 495 degrees plus 360 degrees and that angle will have a measure of 855 degrees. And the big thing that you should know, notice is that all of these angles here, let me pick a, another color here, all of these angles here, angles that measure 495 degrees, negative 225 degrees, 855 degrees, and our, the angle that we were started with, 135 degrees, they're all gonna lie right on this blue, uh, turn blue, blue angle here that that's that was graphed from the beginning. They will all land there, their terminal sides will all land there. No matter how many times you add or subtract 360 degrees, you can add 360 degrees 10 times to 135 degrees, and that angle will land right on this terminal side right here. Okay, that's all there is in this section, in this first section, section uh, 1.3. Um, hopefully you guys got a little bit out of it. Um, the assignment for this section uh, is on is in the textbook. It's page 15. The practice, practice exercises, numbers 1 through 20 and 29 through 46. They're, they're ridiculously easy. They're exactly like the, the problems that I just did and walked you through. Um, you have to find coterminal angles. You have to state, um, you know, you have to find angles under given rotations and graph them, uh, and, and all that, all that stuff. So, thank, thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day. And if you have any questions, please feel free to use the um, use Remind uh, email or the Ask Me Anything um, forum that uh, I posted to Google Classroom. Thank you.